Getting delicious bananas from your banana tree in your home garden is both easy and rewarding. In today's episode, we go over 7 mistakes that gardeners make when growing bananas and how to avoid them. You can buy a banana plant at your local garden store. We bought a dwarf Cavendish banana. The plant is sold in this 5 gallon container. And banana trees are sold in containers at nurseries and garden stores as it's easier to sell them rather than picking plants from the ground. It's just a convenience factor that goes with it. So we are going to take this banana plant or banana tree out of this container first by tapping the sides of the pot till the plant is loose and comes out of the pot like so. And just look at the massive roots here. It's almost root bound in this 5 gallon container which is a pretty big sized container for most plants. And we are now going to try and grow this banana plant in a larger pot. This is a 40 gallon pot and we have grown several fruit trees in a container of this size. If you have seen our prior videos, we have grown Kishu mandarins, blackberries, grapes and a lot more easily and they have all fruited in a large container like this. We have a good potting mix here, some reused potting mix, peat moss, compost, perlite and worm castings. Fill the pot all the way to the top as the air gaps go away and as the compost decomposes, the level of soil in the container will go down over time. This is how our banana plant looks like once potted. This dwarf banana tree will now begin to grow in the upcoming months. Which brings us to the number one mistake that gardeners make, which is not watering your banana plant enough. Banana plants take up water that they store in their trunk, their leaves, their flowers and fruits. A banana tree will have a lot of stored water. And this is why it's important to water your banana plants deeply and also often. I recommend using a micro sprinkler drip system to ensure that your banana plant is well watered. This is especially important when growing bananas in containers, but also matters a lot when growing banana plants in the ground. Bananas do need a lot of water. It's been 15 months since we planted our dwarf banana plant in this container, and you can see it's become nice and big. It has also produced a lot of baby banana plants around the mother plant. Here you can once again see the baby banana plants which you can remove and plant separately or let it grow along with the mother plant. It's been 20 months since planting and we had to move to a new home. Since our banana plant was in a container, we took it along and patiently waited for it to grow in fruit. As you can see, the plant is still growing well and keeping up with the weather here in Southern California. And bananas grow excellent in the Southern California weather in zone 10. We finally saw one bud produced by the banana plant. You can see this beautiful purple colored banana bud here, which has a lot of flowers inside it. You can also see the baby banana plants around the mother, which have now grown bigger. And that brings us to mistake number two. Bananas are best grown in the ground. Containers are okay to keep the banana plant for some time, but this bud that you see here never produced any bananas. There's just not enough room for this banana tree to grow, even in this large pot. Although two of these plants have now grown enough to produce fruit, there's just not enough room for the roots or space in the soil for any nutrients. As soon as we planted this banana tree in the ground and waited for six to seven months, the banana tree really took off. You can see lush green growth and vigor in the banana tree. It was as though it needed freedom from that pot to grow to its full potential. Nice big leaves, larger trunk and it also got a lot of space along with the soil from Mother Earth, rich with nutrients, all of which made this difference. Even this dwarf Rajapuri banana we have is growing very well in the ground. Nice big leaves and trunk ready to produce flowers and fruits. The Cavendish banana, by the way, is the most commonly found banana, the one you get at the stores. Once again, looking very good and compared to its health in the container, it's so much better. In the fall season, we get Santa Ana winds, which causes the banana leaves to tear and look extremely stressed. You can see how badly the Santa Ana winds have affected our dwarf Cavendish banana plant. Lots of torn leaves and some leaves turning yellow and brown and dying. However, fast forward a few months and the banana plant has grown back with full vigor. This is one of the biggest benefits of growing a banana plant in the ground. With all the available water and nutrients, the plant has bounced back to life. 
and is producing new leaves and is growing very well. And now coming to mistake number three that a lot of banana growers make and that is not harvesting and using the banana flowers. You will be surprised at how many gardeners never realize that the banana flowers are edible. And while the banana plant is producing fruits, you can still harvest the banana bud which has a lot of flowers, cook the flowers and eat them. The bananas will continue to grow and mature on the tree in the upcoming months. And harvesting the bud has no effect on the quality of the fruits. This is how the banana flowers look like. They look absolutely beautiful. And they can be used in a wide variety of dishes. Here you can see a dish made with banana flowers and lentils cooked with spices. And it tastes absolutely delicious. And is extremely good for your health as well. You can see another harvest of the banana bud here. You can see how the bananas stop forming after a few bunches. So you can harvest the banana bud safely. And if your banana plant is small, the size of the bud might be smaller, which is perfectly fine. And the rest of the fruits will continue to mature. As the plant grows, the size of the banana bud will be much larger in size, as you see in this harvest of the banana bud. And this banana bud will have a lot of banana flowers as well. Once again, we will leave the fruits to mature. With this, we come to mistake number four, and that is either not fertilizing your banana plant or not fertilizing your banana plant enough. In order to get good sized bananas from your plant, use a nitrogen rich fertilizer. If you prefer not to use salt based fertilizers, also called all purpose fertilizers, use an organic fruit tree fertilizer and use lots of manure like cow manure or chicken manure. Banana trees have very high requirements for nitrogen and will do best with a high nitrogen fertilizer like these. This will give you very good quality fruits from your trees and not tiny bananas that you cannot use. And as you can see in this harvest, these bananas ripen into bunches like these, which are extremely delicious. Moving on to mistake number five, which is growing full-sized banana trees that can be huge, as huge as 20 to 30 feet. This not only complicates the growing aspect, it means that you're using far more resources to get bananas from your trees. Dwarf banana trees are not only easy to grow, they will give you as many bananas as a regular tree, while requiring lesser space. And it's a lot easier to harvest the fruits as well. Dwarf banana trees are also easy to get. Our local Home Depot in Irvine, California always has the dwarf Cavendish banana plant as well as the dwarf Rajapuri banana plants for sale. So for the simple reason that dwarf fruit trees utilize space and other resources so effectively, you must always get a dwarf banana tree. I just cannot see any reason why anyone would grow full-sized, huge banana trees unless you are looking for a very specific variety that is not available as a dwarf tree. Now we have seen how nice and lush the banana leaves can be, but a lot of gardeners make the mistake of throwing them away too. And that's a huge mistake, because banana leaves can be used to add flavor to your dishes when you use them as a plate to eat food. And they are 100% biodegradable as well. You can steam lentils, vegetables, even meats wrapped in banana leaves and they add a unique flavor to your dishes. Popular South Indian dishes taste amazing when eaten on banana leaves. It really brings out all the flavors in what you're eating. In Thai cuisines, herbs and other aromatic spices taste amazing when eaten on banana leaves. One banana plant produces one cluster of fruits and that's it. After harvesting the fruits, you can cut down the tree. And if you thought there was no other useful part left, you'll be making a huge mistake as the core of the banana stem is one of the most delicious things you can eat. So instead of making the mistake of throwing the stem away, cut the trunk into manageable pieces and then start cutting into it till you reach the core of the plant. Use a sharp knife and protect your hands with gloves. This takes some effort. We are aiming to cut open the layers in the stem to get to the core part of the stem. Here is another piece of the trunk of the banana plant and we are again cutting away to find the core of the stem. That is the part that is edible. The outer layers are too fibrous to use. But when you get to the core of the stem, it's a delicate portion of the plant that can be cooked and eaten. And here it is, the core of the stem. This is the part we are trying to get to. You can see three core portions of the stem that we got and this can be shredded and cooked into some delicious dishes. So there we have it folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode on growing bananas 
and we'll learn from this and avoid the common mistakes that we all make in growing bananas. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments box below. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.